and welcome to this week's video episode of Ministry Monday. I'm your host, Amanda Bruce. The second half of episode 116 features my time sitting down and speaking with Mark Lawson. Mark is the president of E.C. Shermer Publications as well as Morningstar Publications. And today Mark sits down and speaks with us about ways to engage music ministry at a time when vocal production might be limited, whether that's now in light of COVID-19 or otherwise. In a time when singing might be limited or changed to an extent, how can we engage music? Today he's here to speak with us about the instrumental options that we can exercise and start to use even in the time of a global pandemic, or maybe if you're just starting your music program up to a new degree. Thank you so much to Mark for his time and insight today. Okay, so today on Ministry Monday, I'm so glad to be talking with Mark Lawson. Mark is the president of Morningstar and E.C. Shermer. Uh, thanks so much for being on Ministry Monday today, Mark. It's great to be here, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mark, the reason that I asked you to be on this particular episode today is because, of course, the, the conversation that we're having all the time right now is how does one minister without singing or to singing in a limited ability? Or um, what if one is limited in the instruments that they can use because of the um, spreading, you know, um, droplets and things like that? Sure. So, well, you know, this episode really is focusing on thinking how to minister without singing in a different way. We're still, of course, involving music in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let me ask you too, in your experience at Morningstar and E.C. Shermer, what are some of the ways that you see music being implemented safely during COVID-19 at this time? I think it's a very interesting question. It, it, so much of it depends upon the resources that you have, plus also the space that you are working in. You know, if it's a tight space that you have, you may not have as many options for the kinds of instruments that you can use. If you have a lot of space and can spread out, then almost any instrument can be used uh, safely at this point, uh, depending on what, what your space is. So um, we're seeing a variety of different things. Uh, I think that one of the things that people have to realize when they're doing, particularly doing online type worship, is that hymn singing is so different because people aren't actually singing. And so people, a lot of people are using instruments to do different stanzas of a hymn or using hymn arrangements of their instruments to substitute for choral music, hymn singing. It still gives the congregation that melody that they're used to hearing. They can sing it in their mind. They often can hear the words even as they're playing. So um, I think it's a great option. Um, obviously, I think at this point, strings are the safest of all the instruments, but um, I think you can use others safely as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I have found that instruments, I think at some points we were kind of afraid to bring them back but now I think we can, you know, I think it's like, well, we can test the waters and we can bring back our violinist. We can bring back our cellist, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And I think that uh, the other thing is that uh, what I'm also encouraging churches to do sometimes that obviously they're not buying much music, choral music at this point. Right. Uh, and that sometimes they have some money in their budget and I'm encouraging them to hire instrumentalists as well to give a variety of different things. So, um, you know, there, there may be some money that they could supplement uh, having a violinist in or a trio or something that would make it uh, a much more appealing type of experience for being an online service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Still kind of keeping that focus on trying to bridge the gap between in-person and online worship and online ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me ask you this then. Um, do you have any suggestions for parishes who would like to start implementing music that's not singing or vocal, like you said, but maybe they don't know where to start? I think that's important. I think that many instrumentalists, even the good instrumentalists, do not always have access to the kinds of publications that are appropriate for church use. And so I know that uh, sometimes that they only have a certain kind of literature in their repertoire. And so they're often looking for advice 
from the church musician who's asking them to play for what is it that you want me to play? What would be most appropriate? You know, I have this 10 minute sonata. Is that what you want? And normally it's not, you know, normally you're looking for the two and a half to three minute piece that uh, you need. So I think it's important for, to find those resources and there are a lot available, but they are rather hidden in, in some ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the other thing is put the word out that you want instrumentalists. Instrumentalists need places to play and uh, really love to play. And so I have often found if I say, oh, you know, I really uh, would like to have a clarinet for this particular uh, service, that the flautist knows the clarinetists as well, you know, and, right. and that you can get people pretty easily by asking around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point too. I think sometimes we're afraid to ask. Is it just yes. me? You know, I just, yeah. uh, okay. So then let me kind of bring it back to Morningstar. <clears throat> Excuse me, Morningstar. Are there any other resources or pieces of information that you would want us to know that might help us as we try to integrate and implement more instrumental music into the liturgy? Sure, I, I would say that First of all, we have a very large catalog of instrumental music, and I'll share my screen in a second and show you how to search for that. But I know that one of the things about it from the publishing standpoint is that it's some of the hardest music to actually market because every situation is different. Uh, different people have the different ability levels. Uh, they may be looking for something with a flute. Oh, I know where I have an, oh, I have an alto sax player. I have that access, but I can't find that. So publishers often try to publish music uh, that's flexible to be used, and I can show you that uh, as well. So let me just show you if that's okay. I'll share yeah. my screen. So this is our, our home page, and if you go up here to the top to where it says instrumental, you'll see that we have different categories already because we publish such a large range of music. You probably would pick the sacred. When you go here, you'll see we also have things divided by woodwinds, brass strings, so you can start to narrow in. Over on the left is where things are um, filtered. And I will say that this is the part I would use the most uh, when I would do this. If you go to this popular instrumental searches, for example, this is where you're going to find, all right, I want an instrumental solo of some kind. Oh, I'm looking for a duet. Oh, I'm looking for a hymn descant. Um, these are the kinds of things that you might find to be helpful. I'm going to right now pick on instrumental solo. And then I get obviously 330 choices. I don't want that many. So I'm going to go down here to instruments and I'm now going to choose, you know, cello or solo cello, or, you know, there's 147 things for oboe. Um, I can then, I can then start choosing my area. So if I choose my flute area, now I'm going to narrow in. Now I can even go down here and narrow in on my um, difficulty level if I want to. So I have a player that is pretty good. <laughs> so I want moderately easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I start really filtering into uh, what I, I'm getting here. And you'll see that there's a lot of downloadable product as well, which people love for the instrumental things because often they're a week out. They've realized they have a flute next week. And I'm afraid if I order my music, it's going to be two weeks to get here. So I want to do this. And often if you click on it, you will find a preview page that will allow you to see if there's a recording, you can hear it and it, it helps a great deal. Um, so that is, that's one thing I would point out. Another thing I would say is that we have these things called flexible instrumental solo collections. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. 
So these are, what I mean by that is it means that often there's more than one instrument in the collection. I'm going to go back out. I'm going to show you a new one to show you what I'm talking about. Um, one that is very popular right now is this classic collaborations by Charles Callahan. In this collection, it is all classical composers that he's arranged in different, um, different ways. So here are all the different uh, composers that are represented. And then there's a says solo treble instrument, but there's also a B flat instrument, a C instrument, a it's, you can see at the bottom that the different ways that it's arranged here, reproducible part for B flats available as well. Here's the C. Uh, you'll find each one of these has a different key or something like that so that you could play it with different ones. He, Callahan does this quite a bit and uh, provides multiple instrument options with some of his collections. So that's a very helpful thing to have because you don't know, I, this week I have a clarinet, next week I have a flute. Um, they could probably use the same collection and do it. There's, um, I'm going to just show you one other thing. There's a set of books called Organ Plus that Callahan did. And here again, you can see that there are instrumental parts for flute, violin, viola, cello on this one. Here's got flute, oboe, clarinet, violin, viola options. These are all options for each one of these pieces. So it gives you complete flexibility. Um, another thing is strings are sometimes hard to find. Um, string music for church. And we have quite a bit. So we have collections for cello. We have different things for, for violin and cello. You can do um, ensembles. So if I have a, a trio or a string group, uh, string quartet, string quintet, string trio, you know, there's some things like that that are hymn arrangements for those size groups, which is very popular as well. So is that helpful? Yeah, actually, I want to go back real quick. You don't have to on your screen, but I want to go back and talk with you about those flexible instrument options that you gave and the organ options that you just gave. Mm -hmm. um, for those who are listening and don't have the screen in front of them, I want to point out that what, what Mark just showed was not only the collection of music, but also that each song in the collection is currently downloadable. Is that correct, yes. Mark? Yes. Yeah, I think that's a huge asset because like you said, if you're a couple days out and you think, oh my gosh, I have to find something for a flute, but next week I'm going to have a violin, but I got to be honest, I don't want to buy the whole book right now. I think I just want to start with the first song. Right. They're incredibly affordable, Mark. I mean, you, you could pick the first two and it's, you know, it's what, 10 bucks, right. you know, so a very affordable and flexible way to find music on the go. I really like that. Yeah, in most cases, if you're going to buy more than two things out of collection, then it's cheaper to buy the whole collection. Mm -hmm. But um, we, you know, we we have we have that provided for people because I think it is needed so badly yeah. in many ways. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, if you're listening to the podcast and you didn't get a chance, I strongly advise you to go over and I, I will put the links in the show notes of this episode if you're listening. Uh, because spend a little bit of time with that because I will tell you from a personal experience, I have struggled to find instrumental music for church at times. Mm -hmm. And so it really, I think, especially right now, as we have a little bit of time on our hands, maybe we're not playing as many masses. It's nice to spend, oh my gosh, even just a half hour exploring some of the resources like what you just showed. I think it'll pay back in spades. And, and in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be building a special web page that kind of features on some of those things as well, because we know people are looking for that. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're also going to be focusing on the fact that I know that a lot of churches are starting to realize 
what Christmas is going to look like or Advent and Christmas. And so there are a lot of string options for that season in the catalog as well. So we'll focus in on that material so that it helps people kind of see what's there. We have a lot of things for a harp for Advent, for example, that if they can afford to have a harp, that's a great option. Nice. Okay. So again, especially for those who are listening, what's the general web address that you would want to direct them to? Morningstarmusic.com. Okay. And then go to the instrumental section. You'll find buttons at the top that, that put you into the, each section with different okay. search functions in each one of those sections. Okay, great. All right, well, Mark, you have explored the world of instrumental music for churches in a lovely way today. Thank you for your time today, and thank you're you for, thank you for all the effort that you're clearly doing to bring us options that help us engage ministers during this time, and always, um, and, and help give us some great options. So thank you so much. And let me just say, feel free to reach out to us. If you can't find what you want or find the kind of piece that helps you, send a message to our customer service uh, email and we'll respond quickly. Okay, great. And do you have that email address off the top of your head? Do you know? uh, it is um, customer service at morningstarmusic.com. So, great. Okay, and it's also great. a link on our website. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, you heard it from Mark himself. Feel free to contact Morningstar if you need any uh, suggestions, but really go and explore their site. I know I will. So <laughs> I know what I'm doing for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, thank you.